Fox News update. I'm Shepard Smith on Facebook Watch, live from Fox News headquarters in New York. Coming up, we're live on the ground in Afghanistan, where the United States has been fighting the war for nearly two decades. President Trump says he'll withdraw troops as we make progress on peace talks with the Taliban. But what looks like, or what would it look like on the ground after all this time? That's ahead. But first, we begin in Paris, where hundreds of mourners are right now standing vigil for one of the city and the world's most iconic buildings, the 850-year-old Notre Dame Cathedral, destroyed largely in a fire yesterday. Folks made their way through the streets before stopping for this concert, which is underway now. The fire burned for more than 12 hours. The flames caused the cathedral's spire to collapse into its center and its wooden roof to cave in, leaving a gaping hole in what many are calling the city's symbolic heart. A monumental loss, not only for the City of Light, but also for the entire world, when you consider all the history that this church has seen and all the history it survived. The French president, Emmanuel Macron, spoke to the country just a short time ago and told the grieving nation, now is the time to come together and to rebuild. We will build the Cathedral of Notre Dame even more beautiful. And I want for this to be done within the next five years. It is time for us to change this catastrophe and an opportunity to bring us together. I share your pain and that I also share your hope. Now we have a lot to do, and we will act, and we will succeed. As you heard, Macron set a, set a goal, rebuild within five years. The experts say it could take much longer, at least 10 years, if not decades, to rebuild this architectural masterpiece. To start, workers are putting up a temporary roof to block the rain. Then engineers say they'll begin to assess the damage. The top concern, whether any of the stones in the massive vaulted ceiling are cracked from the heat. More than 50 investigators are working to try to pinpoint how the fire started, and they've already questioned more than 30 people. The United States has been fighting the war in Afghanistan now for 6,400 days as of today. That means there is an entire generation of kids now reaching adulthood thousands of miles apart, who have known only conflict, both here and in Afghanistan. Americans who were babies when the war started can now sign up to serve. But this month, a renewed effort to end the fighting for good with peace talks in Qatar. Still, just days ago, the Taliban declared plans for a spring offensive against American forces. Our correspondent Steve Harrigan was on the ground when the war began 18 years ago. He's reporting tonight from Kabul. Steve? Shepard, I enjoyed speaking with you every day 18 years ago, and we're both still here now. What we're seeing in Afghanistan is a little bit confusing, hard to understand for many. That's because peace and war are going on at the same time. On the one hand, the Taliban is fighting actively. They've announced a spring offensive, and they are attacking in places across the country. They are trying to solidify their position, strengthen it, before any peace deal is made. At the same time, they are talking peace with the U.S. and also with representatives picked by the Afghan government. That will start on Friday. So peace talks are really moving ahead. The real question is, what will this mean? What kind of a peace could it be? And what role will the Taliban play? The Taliban is certainly trying to change its image from a strict, austere, almost medieval form form of Islam uh, from the past. They are saying now they will put women on their negotiating team, but two schools, girls' schools, were just blown up in the western part of Afghanistan. The Taliban not taking responsibility for that. The mood here in Kabul, one of fear and hope. A lot of people fear that the Taliban cannot be trusted, that they want power, they want to come back here and turn back the clock. Other people say, we've been free for the past 18 years. We've gone to school. We've gone to college. We have businesses now. We're, our population has quadrupled in Kabul. There's no way they can control that. There's no way they can turn the clock back. Of course, even if the Taliban does take control, they will need international aid. 
As far as the U.S. side goes, the U.S. is demanding a guarantee that Afghanistan will not be used again for terrorist attacks. That's something the Taliban is going to promise in these peace talks. As far as violence goes, on the street, weeks can go by in Kabul where it's fairly quiet, but three service members were killed just last week north of Bagram, a roadside explosive, the deadliest but simple device which has cost the lives of so many Americans, more than 2,200 killed in 18 years of war. That sacrifice has given a lot of Afghans a window, a window of freedom. The question now is whether peace talks can sustain and build on that window or whether the clock will, in fact, be turned back. Shepard. Steve Harrigan reporting live this Wednesday morning in Kabul. Seattle, we've got a deal. That's how the Seattle Seahawks quarterback Russell Wilson told fans that he's staying put for another four years. What he didn't mention, at least at that moment, is a reported record-setting deal. There's word Russell Wilson will be taking home $35 million a year on average for the next four years. And that contract makes him the highest paid player in all of the National Football League. Wilson has led the Seahawks to the postseason in six of his last seven seasons and has one Super Bowl ring to boot. Semper Fidelis, always faithful. That's the motto of the U.S. Marines. And one service member put it on full display at the Boston Marathon yesterday. Micah Herndon crawled across the finish line after his body flat gave out. He served in, served in Iraq and in Afghanistan and said he was running the race in honor of three people killed by an IED during a tour in Afghanistan, two Marines and a British journalist who died in the year 2010. Herndon told reporters he repeats their three names to keep himself going. He finished the race in three hours, 38 minutes. Workers out on a rig in the Gulf of Thailand found something more precious than oil. They say they found this pup swimming more than 135 miles from land. A crew member first posted the story here on Facebook. He says they saw the dog coming toward their rig and they managed to attach a rope and pull the pup to safety. They named him aptly Survivor. Crew members say they think the dog might have fallen off a fishing boat. No idea really how long he'd been stranded at sea. That dog now in the hands of an animal protection group, which reports he's in very good shape. Check out more news from Fox News on today's biggest stories on cable, satellite, radio, and right here on Facebook Watch, live or on demand. I'm Shepard Smith, Fox News, New York.